Actually, we did find footage of legends at their best. It was in our Pro Bowl coverage from the early years that rarely got used because the uniforms didn't match with the rest of the games and sometimes the numbers were different and the teams didn't want to use the footage in the highlights. But where else could you find George Hallis coaching John Unitas and Don Shula working with Fran Tarkenton? Now because none of this footage got used, all of the best remained in the outs. Jim Brown refusing to go down. Jimmy Taylor running the Green Bay sweep. Bear tight end Mike Ditka being his belligerent self. Super quick Chicago safety Rosie Taylor. Scrambling Fran Tarkin and throwing to Boom Boom Brown. Dave Parks making a block to spring Tommy Mason. John Mackey going deep. Detroit's Terry Barr making a fingertip catch. That's too bad this interception by Green Bay linebacker Ray Nitschke wasn't in a regular season game because in his contract with Lombardi, Nitschke got a $50 bonus for every pass he intercepted. Now looking back, it seems to me that the pro bowlers of the 60s played harder in this game than they do now. Just watch this, Doug Atkins, number 81, rush the quarterback. In the 1964 game, number 89, Gino Marchetti, delivered this message to quarterback Frank Ryan, and there's a great story about this. Marchetti felt that the Browns had run up the score two weeks earlier in the NFL championship game, and he told Ryan after the game, listen, you don't do that, and I'm going to get you. And he did in this Pro Bowl. But number 77, Eugene Big Daddy Lipscomb, was the most dominating defender in Pro Bowl history. They used to say he could tilt the field. Now, in this footage from 1963, Big Daddy dominated the best defensive lineman in the league. He was 6'7", 300, but he didn't beat up the guy in front of him. Pursuit was his specialty. He didn't spend a lot of time pounding on the blockers. He was out to pound the ball carrier, the quarterback. Big Daddy was MVP that day but no one could have known that this was also his last game. Big Daddy died six weeks later.